all stand together, read together, and recite together. I will call to worship. Keep going. Keep going. For the 100th Psalm, let us read. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. Amen. Father God, it's done for your glory, Father God. It's not about us. 
Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus. It's about praising you, Father God, and honoring you, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus. So, Father God, we come to thank you, Lord God, for forgiving us of our sins. Anything that we have done, Father God, that's not right in your sight, please forgive us, Father God. And we know, Father God, that once we ask you, it's done. So, Father God, we just thank you, Lord God, for being God all by yourself. In the mighty name of Jesus and all of your children, say amen, amen, amen. 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 vision, our mission, and our affirmation of faith. Our vision, we are called to serve the Lord and the community in a number of diverse but deeply connected ways through prayer and worship, teaching, proclamation, service, and outreach. Our mission, New Life Christian Church is a community of faith reaching the heart, soul, and minds of all people. We provide an atmosphere of worship that is life-changing, a ministry that is compassionate, supportive, and empowering of all people through education and teaching of biblical truth. We are called to serve God and the community in a number of diverse but deeply connected ways as we follow Christ. And our affirmation of faith, we confess that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, and proclaim Him Lord and Savior of the world. In Christ's name and by his grace, we accept our mission of witness and service to all people. We rejoice in God, maker of heaven and earth, and in the covenant of love, which binds us to God and one another. Through baptism into Christ, we enter into newness of life and are made one with the whole people of God. In the communion of the Holy Spirit, we are joined together in discipleship and in obedience to Christ. At the table of the Lord, we celebrate with thanksgiving the saving acts and presence of Christ. Within the universal church, we receive the gift of ministry and the light of scripture. In the bonds of Christian faith, we yield ourselves to God that we may serve the one whose kingdom has no end. Blessings, glory, and honor be to God forever. Amen. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost as it was in the beginning, we shall and never shall be. say hallelujah. hallelujah. Come on now, if you really love the Lord, come on, give God a praise. Wherever you are, in your, in your home, give Him some praise. Come on, give Him some praise. He's worthy. God, we love you today. We gather to know us to be. To lift your name on you. Bless His holy name. Amen. Certainly we honor the Spirit of the Lord today. We thank God for all of you, my brothers and sisters in Christ and in creation, we welcome you to New Life Christian Church. Amen. Where the Spirit of the Lord dwells. Amen. Our doors hinge on, swing on the hinges of welcome. So certainly we welcome you, those that are in the sanctuary, those that are viewing by way of Facebook Live, those that are uh, with us on Zoom. Welcome to the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. We encourage you not just to view those that are here and those that are viewing online, Amen. not just to view, but to worship with us. Yes. Amen. 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 This is our worship experience and we've been created. We are created to worship. So we thank God for 
all of you, my brothers and my sisters. I want to thank all those that came out on Friday night to our open mic. Come on, bless the Lord. We had an awesome time. Amen, amen. Uh, I'm just always overwhelmed with the talent that we have. Amen. In our church and in our community. Yes. They did a phenomenal job. Amen. They even had me doing Rapper's Delight. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But it was all in fun. We had a great time. And Santa Claus did come by the church yesterday. Amen. And he has assured me, if you have been good, amen, you will get those things that you have asked for. So we thank those that came out to our brunch with Santa on yesterday. Uh, our cantata is coming up. Amen. And I was in a clergy meeting on yesterday where we have visiting churches coming to fellowship with us, and that is December the 18th. December the 18th, uh, our holiday, our Christmas cantata. And we, are, we believe we're beginning at 6.30 p.m. 5.30 p.m. 5.30 p.m. And so uh, I did send the president of the choir a text yesterday. I was going to send it out to all the choir. Amen. Don't forget your assessments. It's a song. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And if, you, even if you're not in the choir, you can uh, make an assessment. Amen. Uh, uh, we, we just thank God for the life of the church. We're a good church, people. Amen. We are a good church. Amen. Can I say that again? We have a good Amen. church. When I hear the horror stories, and it shouldn't, it, it is a shame before God what I hear going on in some households of faith. Amen. With the arguing, the fussing, and the fighting that is going on. And we don't have that here at New Life. I told folks we will never have a church fight. Amen. Not in new life. Not as long as I'm pastoring. Amen. Amen. We do things in decency and in order. And we love the people of God and we love the Lord. Amen. And we're not a perfect church, but we are a perfecting church. Amen. Amen. Getting ready for our Lord and Savior to come. Amen. Uh, are there any, a watch night service. Amen. That is New Year's Eve. We will begin at 1030 p.m. Amen. Please, ma'am, please, sir, come out. We will uh, be live as well as uh, in person on uh, Facebook Live as well as in person. Amen. Uh, we're going to do uh, finger foods this year. Amen. Amen. Y'all be filling us up at 1 o'clock in the morning. Amen. Black eyed peas. And, you know, bring some peas. Amen. And, and as we get close, I will, I will talk to you about the tradition. Amen. That is a tradition in the African American community. Amen. Amen. That we prepare black eyed peas. Well. Amen. And collard greens. All right. Amen. Now I'm not superstitious. Hallelujah. But them collard greens bring that money, they say. <laughs> Amen. And the first person in the house should be a man. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. You know, you know all these right. things. We we don't put that stuff in. We don't have no horseshoes in the church or none of that. <laughs> But we, we praise God for traditions. Amen. 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 Just understand where the traditions come from. Amen. Amen. It does not have to interfere with our theology. That's we right. know that we serve a God that still sits high and looks low. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Are there any other pertinent announcements that Pastor is forgetting? Thank you for the people who supported the pop-up. Amen. Amen. We had an awesome pop-up shop. Amen. Yes. And uh, I put an order in, uh, uh, so I'm getting gifts uh, sent to me, amen. But we had a wonderful time. So thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir, for supporting our pop-up shop, supporting local business, amen. And our next one is in March, I believe. Uh, uh, so we will keep you posted on those things, amen. My brothers and my sisters, it is... Uh, Amen, amen. Uh, we have a local, uh, a resident baker, amen, and that is Mother Grissom. And if you've never had her pies, uh, yeah, I like Patty, but uh, Patty pies have nothing on Mother Grissom pies. That's right, amen. amen. So please, man, please sir, put your order, your holiday order in for Mother Grissom's sweet potato pies. 
Amen. Amen. And uh, they are $15 a piece. Amen. You can't go wrong with a Mother Grissom pie. Amen. Uh, sometimes those pies don't make it in the house. Hallelujah. Amen. I put my name on mine. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. At this time, uh, we will receive our offering before we do our Advent uh, meditation. Amen. At this time uh, of worship, it is offering time. Come on, give God a praise for offering time. Amen. It's said that you can give without loving, but you cannot love without giving. Amen. Go on after that. Amen. Amen. Uh, if you have, if you need an envelope, please raise your hand. Our usher will provide you with one. But we've made we've made giving so convenient. If you are giving online, if you're giving online uh, by way of Cash App, Amen. The Cash App ID, and I'll get it for you. Amen. Is nine seven three. Six seven zero one eight nine nine again nine seven three six seven zero one eight nine nine and that is if you're giving by way of Cash App. If you're giving by way of PayPal, it's New Life Bloomfield at Gmail dot com. New Life Bloomfield at Gmail dot com. And if you're giving by way of Give a Fly, you can. Give, it is New Life Christian Church, Bloomfield, New Jersey. Amen. Hallelujah. If you're sending checks, money orders, uh, please, the address is 12 Prospect Street, New Life Christian Church, 12 Prospect Street, Bloomfield, New Jersey. Amen. Amen. So let us give. Amen. God loves a what? Cheerful. Cheerful giver. Amen. Come on, put a smile on your face as we as we give. Hallelujah. Being able to give is a blessing. Hallelujah. Amen. God, we thank you. Come on, let us pray. Our God and our Father, we thank you for this time of worship. By worshiping through our giving. We thank you, Lord, for those that are giving, those that shall give throughout the week. We pray your blessings upon the tithe and the offering. We pray, God, that you will increase it a hundredfold for the upbuilding of thy kingdom. We thank you, Lord, for the ability to sow into your kingdom. Now, Lord, we pray for those that are giving, those that have a mind to give, but not the resources. Lord, bless them, O oh God, that they may be able to give. God, we say thank you and we honor you. This is our prayer in the matchless and the strong name of Jesus. The people of God said amen. 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 At this time, uh, it is the season of Advent. Amen. Amen. And certainly we want to uh, celebrate the Advent season. And Advent is a time of waiting for the arrival of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. At this time, uh, Brother Charles Webb will come and lead us in our Advent meditation.
all about reflecting on how we can prepare our hearts and homes for Christ's birth Amen. in the world as it is today. It's a time of faith. It's a time where faith communities and families come together to remember through prayer, reflections, special music, and good deeds that are the true meaning of Jesus' birth. The four Sundays preceding Christmas, which is when Christians celebrate the birth of Christ, are recognized as the four virtues. The candles of the Advent wreath symbolize hope, love, joy, and peace. And the candles are lit in that order. Today we are in the third sisters, our scripture lesson today is found in the New Testament book of Matthew. Amen. Matthew's gospel in the second chapter. We would that you return with us either electronically or traditionally in your paper Bible. Matthew, the second chapter, and we'll begin reading at verse number three. And from the King James Version of the Holy Writ, you will hear these words reported. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes and the people together, he demanded them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, And thou Bethlehem in the land of Judah art not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, he had privately called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go 
and search diligently for the young child. And when you have found him, bring him word, bring me word again, that I may come and worship him also. Thus far, the word of God. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. At this time, we'll have a selection from our praise team. Amen. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna give it to him. No, you can do it.
getting our hearts ready for the word of God. Amen. Amen. Uh, from the scripture we read in your hearing, amen, uh, the Matthews in the Matthew and Gospel, amen, the Gospel recorded by Matthew, amen, amen. Uh, it chronicles, it records uh, the happenings of the time in which Jesus was born, mm -hmm. amen, amen, and gives us some background of the landscape gives us some background of uh, the political uh, uh, framework that was in place at that particular time. Mm. Amen. And so from the scripture we read into the <coughs> hearing, I want to lift up a couple of verses, amen, amen. to give us some footing, amen. Verse 3, second chapter of Matthew, verse 3 says, When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and Jerusalem with him. Uh, I want to use for this, uh, for a subject for the next few moments, which are hours, with the aid, the help, and the unction of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, our very familiar um, show that we watch every yeah, I want to talk about the Grinch that stole Christmas. All right. All right. The Grinch that stole Christmas. Wow. Amen. Let us pray. God, fill our mouth with important stuff. Sit us down when we said enough. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. 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 Uh, this is not, amen, I do not have a copyright on the Grinch that stole Christmas. Amen. amen. It is Dr. Seuss. That's right, that's right. Amen. But my wife and I, amen, she came upstairs yesterday and said, the Grinch that stole Christmas was on. I said, I know, I know. <laughs> my question to you this year is, uh, uh, is this the year the Grinch is going to steal your Christmas? Uh -oh. Amen. Dr. Seuss' classic tale of the Grinch that stole Christmas is one of my favorite Christmas programs. Uh, if you've never seen it, it's about a Grinch that goes to Whoville right. to steal Christmas. Uh, he, he, this, this guy's just downright mean, Anthony. I, I mean, he, he takes all the toys, the, the pies, the trees, the ornaments, every sign, every symbol, every emblem of Christmas this guy steals. Uh, so, so, so when the people of Whoville, Whoville awake uh, on Christmas Day, uh, they will be shocked to see that their Christmas is gone. Oh, or is it? Wow. My, my question to you this year is, who is the Grinch who will steal your Christmas? Wow. Uh, well, will, will it be the year that the Grinch will steal your joy? Hmm. Will this be the year that you allow a Grinch to steal your peace? Hmm. Uh, will it be the pandemic that we just can't seem to shake? Hmm. Uh, will it be systematic racism that still exists? Uh, whether it's ov overt or, or unmasking racial microaggression. Wow. Uh, microaggression. Some, some, some racism is so subtle that neither the victim nor the, 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 the uh, perpetrator may entirely understand what's going on. Oh, well, and and it's, that's especially toxic for our world. Uh -huh. Instead of spreading joy uh, among all men, which is which is what Christmas is all about, uh, we're watching school shootings. Oh. November 30th, there was a mass school shooting in Michigan where four were killed and seven were injured. Uh, so it stands to reason why one would ask, is this going to be the year that the Grinch steals Christmas? Uh, in our text today, uh, uh, Herod, King Herod, tries to steal Christmas. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, it, it, it's no surprise, though, uh, King Herod. He, 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 he was disturbed from the news that he heard from the Magi, from, from the wise men. Magi came, from, came to Jerusalem looking for the one who had been born king of the Jews. Uh, Herod was not the rightful king uh, uh, from the line of the lineage or the line of David. And in fact, he was not even a descendant of Jacob. Uh, but he was a descendant of Esau that made him an uh, idiomite. Uh, cousin of the Shilites, but he was an idiomite. Uh, uh, he reigned over Palestine from 37 B.C. to 4 B.C. It, the, the, the fact caused, uh, because he wasn't from the lineage, most Jews didn't respect him or even accept him as the king, even though he did a whole lot for the country, they didn't accept him. The word on the street was that there was a coming king. Uh, and if someone had been rightfully born king, then Herod's job would be in jeopardy. Uh, he therefore called the Jewish scholars together and inquired. He said, when will this Christ be born? Uh, interestingly, Herod connected the one born king of the Jews that, that he had heard about, the Christ, the Messiah. Obviously, Israel had a messianic hope that a Messiah was coming, someone that was coming to save them from the oppression that they were under. Okay. Herod knew that uh, if he could kill the one called Christ the one born king of the Jews, and then he could steal Christmas and secure his position. Well. The answer to Herod's question was simple, uh, because the prophet Micah had prophesied the location of where the Christ child should be born. Uh, the Messiah would be born in Bethlehem. And Herod stayed at the palace and he relied on other folks to do his dirty work. Wow. Sent them to go find out where the baby was born. Mm -hmm. Jesus came uh, to give sight to the blind, hope to the poor, love to humankind. But, but he, had, he had a bounty on his life even before he got here. Jesus came to spread joy and gladness in a sin-sick world, but they meant to kill him. Jesus came to give us the keys to the kingdom of God. Uh, I, I believe that if we understand the reason for Jesus coming, we would live above where we are right now, but they didn't want it. Look at the world that, that, that they lived in and look at the world that we live in. The world is a mess. That's right. Legally, it's one-sided and mathematically, it's divided and economically, it's bankrupt. Wow. Ethically, it's corrupt and physically, it's sick. Nationally, it's polarized and psychologically, it's schizophrenic and yeah. spiritually, it's a valley of dry bones. Yeah. Jesus came to straighten it out. Yes. Uh, but the hope of the world uh, the babe in Bethlehem had, 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 had some people out there looking to kill him. They wanted to steal the very first Christmas. So, so my question to New Life is, what Grinch is trying to steal your Christmas? Uh, who, who, who's the Grinch that's trying to steal your joy? The, the Grinch trying to take what God has already promised you, already given you. Who is that Grinch? Is it loneliness? Is it the lack of companionship this holiday season? Is it, is it an addiction that you're dealing with? Is it, is it that job that you can't stand and they can't stand you? And what is it that's trying to steal your Christmas? My Lord. Is it a relationship that's lost its love? Uh, is it a child that just can't get it together? Who is it this year trying to steal your Christmas? I'll wait. Think about it. There's always something trying to steal your joy. That's right. What thoughts in your mind are preventing you from enjoying Christmas right now? You've got everything that you need. God has blessed us, given us all that we need, and we can't even enjoy Christmas. Uh, is it that you don't have enough money uh, to, to purchase those 
items that 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 those kids ain't even gonna use after a week. Wow. The pressure of gift giving that the world has placed on us. Let's look at the text. Uh, Matthew two and nine it says, and being warned by God in a dream not to return, Herod uh, to Herod they returned to their country another way. Herod sent the wise men to, to go find Jesus. Oh, but the Spirit of the Lord said, no, don't go back to Herod. Because uh, Herod means to do the Savior in. You see, God comes to men in different ways, different spheres, uh, which uh, they are most familiar with. Uh, to Zach Zach Zacharias, he came to him in the temple. To the shepherds, God came to them in the field. To the wise men, he came to them uh, with stars in the heavens. And, and he knows just how to find us. God knows just how to speak to us. It may not uh, be in the church house, but God can speak to you on the job. Or God can speak to you while you're walking down the street. And God will speak to you, will meet you in your place of need. So Matthew 2, 9 and 12 says, The journey of the Magi to find Jesus was a miracle. The star they had seen in the east now appeared and led them to the specific house in Bethlehem where they found the child Jesus. Bethlehem, uh, 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 thank you, Reverend Gell, I've been there. Bethlehem uh, is about five miles outside of Jerusalem. Amen. Uh, and, and so the stars led them to uh, the place where he was born. I did say a star led them. Amen. Planets led them. Uh, naturally, uh, stars don't travel the heavens from east to west. Uh, stars usually go from north to south. Could it be that the star that led them uh, wasn't just any old star? But could it be that it was the Shekinah glory star? Could it be the kind of star uh, that led the children of Israel in the wilderness for 40 years uh, by a pillar of fire by night and by a cloud by day. Perhaps they saw uh, it in the east, uh, but that star that they called a star, uh, may it, maybe it could have been explained some way, uh, but all explanations are inadequate. How a star can lead you to a particular location. Could it be uh, that Jupiter, Saturn, and Mars uh, had lined up in a certain constellation? Could it be a supernova? Or could it have been a comet? Uh, or a mishap of the constellations? Uh, I don't know how it was, uh, but Earth, Wind, and Fire said it like this. Shiny star, no matter who you are. Uh, shining bright to see. Yay. Wrong place, I'm sorry. Um, nevertheless, uh, the star led them where the child was going to be. And they led them there to worship him. Uh, there they worshiped him. Their worship was heightened. And because they worshiped him, uh, they bring him gifts. Gifts of gold, incense, and myrrh. These were gifts worthy of a king. I'm talking about a baby that was born uh, in an old stable where animals were born. Uh, but they brought him king's gifts. They brought him gifts that only leaders would have. Uh -huh. Leaders of nations would receive. They came and they worshipped him. The wise men were overjoyed at finding the child. Uh, and if you think uh, that becoming a Christian means that you stop having joy, uh, I've got news for you. When you become a Christian, when you find Jesus, uh, it brings you joy, unspeakable joy. Uh, it brings you joy that the world can't give. Uh, joy that fills your soul, blesses your heart, 
heals your wounds Amen. and makes you glad. This joy comes from knowing that all will be well, Amen. that Christ has come, that God loves you, and that your future is secure. See, some folks uh, have been on the journey of finding themselves. They call it self exploration. Uh, uh, some of y'all trying to find love, trying to find satisfaction. Uh, some of you are trying to find out the meaning of life uh, or what life is all about. But I stopped by New Life to tell you wow. there's joy at the end of the journey yeah. when you find Christ. Yeah. When you find Christ, you find all that you need. He'll give you joy. He'll give you peace. He'll give you understanding. It'll bring back to your remembrance all the things that you need. Yeah. No matter what you're facing, this Christmas time is a time of goodwill. Yeah. It's a time of love, a time to share with family, a time to love God. You see, Harry couldn't steal Christmas. And I tell you, this economy can't steal Christmas. Racism can't steal Christmas. Sickness and death can't steal Christmas. But the thing I love about that story, about the Grinch that stole Christmas, after they finally uh, woke up in the morning, they found out that all was gone. All the who candy, all the who toys, uh, all it was all gone. He took it up to a cave. That old mean Grinch took it up to a cave and he looked down at Whoville and instead of them crying, instead of them being upset, he saw them down there singing. They were down there shouting. They were down there praising God, showing love. And that is to say, you can't steal my joy. You can't steal my peace. You can't steal Christmas. I don't care what happens. You may take my job. I might be on the brink of losing it all. I may be coming out of a breakup. I may have just left the funeral. But you can't steal my joy. I don't care what the situation. There's a silver lining when you got Jesus. And I submit that Christmas is more is more than what's under the tree. That's right. Uh, it's about more than pies and mistletoe. It's about more uh, than uh, falling off a financial cliff. Uh, it's about the joy the Savior brings. It's about a loving God giving his only son to suffer and die. So the next time uh, somebody tries to steal your Christmas, uh, someone tries to steal your joy, you need to back them up. Uh, just like we had to back up Herod, uh, back up the Grinch. Uh, say no devil in hell can steal the true meaning of Christmas. Well, I need some help here. Uh, the true meaning of Christmas. Uh, you don't mind if I go to another favorite of mine. Uh, the Charlie Brown Christmas. Charlie Brown had it bad. Uh, I mean, he got the wrong ornaments. The tree that he got was a sad little tree. By the time they got to the school play, everybody was trying to steal Charlie Brown's Christmas. And Charlie Brown asked a question. Does anyone know the real meaning of Christmas? Amen. Christmas is all about? Lights, please. 
And there were in the same country shepherds, abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them. And the glory of the Lord shone round about them. And they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not. For behold, I bring you tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. He shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God, and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Uh, That's what Christmas is all about, Charlie Brown. And my brothers and my sisters, if Linus can preach the gospel That's right. and tell the story about what Christmas is all about, then you and I should be able to go and tell the Christmas story. Yes. And so my brothers and my sisters, you may be going through the Christmas season preparing to buy different toys. Amen. But Linus gave us the true meaning of Christmas found in the gospel recorded by Luke. Joy, which will be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. All right. I won't let all this commercialism ruin my Christmas. All right. Amen. Charlie Brown. My brothers and my sisters, don't let anything steal your joy or steal your Christmas. He is our God, our Savior. Amen. Jehovah Roi. That means he's the Lord and my shepherd. He's Jehovah Jireh. That means the Lord will provide. He's Jehovah Nisi. That means the Lord is my banner. He's Jehovah Shalom. That means he's the God of peace. He's Jehovah Shama. Yes. That means the Lord is there. But if you make it personal, you can say he's my way maker. Yes. Uh, he's my burden bearer. Yeah, yeah. He's a lawyer in the courtroom and a doctor in my signal. He's a way maker. He's, he's, a, he's a mother to the motherless and a father to the father. He's a friend that's sticking closer than a brother. My brothers and my sisters, don't let any grinch steal your Christmas. Come on, let's give God some praise. And I want to pray for you. I want to extend the invitation of discipleship to anyone that does not know Jesus in the pardon of their sins. For the Bible says that if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, that you shall be saved. That means you are now born again. You're born once of the flesh, and now you're born again of the Spirit. If you've never accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life, we invite you to come while the blood is still running warm in your veins. While you yet have an opportunity, while you yet can say yes. He's a way maker, y'all. He came into this world to give us the kingdom, the keys to the kingdom of God. He said, I've come and, and, and what I've seen my father do, I'm going to show you an even greater thing shall you do. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for your loving kindness and your tender mercy. We thank you, Lord, for this season of Advent. 
as we can turn our minds, our hearts, and our face to you. Yes, we will look to the hills yes, Jesus. from which cometh our help, knowing that our help comes from you. Amen. We thank you, Lord, for coming into a sin-sick world, dying on the cross for our sins. But Lord, you didn't stay there. You rose on the third day with all power in your hands. Yes. Now seated at the right hand of the Father God, we thank you for that blessed assurance. Yes. We believe you died for our sins, and God, we want to thank you. Now, Lord, we're, we're praying for those among us that may be sick in the body. God, we know you to be a healer. So right now, Lord, we pray that you will release healing virtue. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, we pray that you will heal all manner of sickness, all manner of mental illness, of physical illness. Oh, God, we know you are a healer. So heal, deliver, and set free. Somebody, Lord, is struggling with an addiction, but God, we know that you can destroy every yoke that binds. So God, we come against any addiction. We come against drug addiction. And we come against, oh God, any form of addiction. We pray that you would destroy it now. In yes, Jesus, Jesus. Name. Yes, Bless our homes, oh God. Bless our homes, oh God. Yes. Lord, we bless home people at home, oh God. But we pray as we are, even in church, Lord, that you will bless our homes. Bless our children and our grandchildren, nieces and nephews, oh God. Bless our co-workers. Lord, those that don't know you, we're praying for those on our job that don't know you. Lord, we're praying for our young people. Lord, the struggles that they go through, we pray, God, that you will protect them and keep them. As they go to school, oh God, keep them safe place the right people around them, oh God, that will be caretakers, oh God. Lord, we're praying for our seniors that have been on the wall a long time. Let them know, Lord, earth has no sorrow. Heaven cannot heal. Let them know, Lord, that even now the greater days are yet ahead. Now, Lord, I don't know their struggles, but you do. Whatever the people of God are going through, God, we place it at your altar right now. We're placing, oh God, depression and loneliness. We're, we're, we're placing, oh God, our careers and our jobs. We're placing on the altar, God, our, our, our students, oh God. We're placing them all at the altar. You know what we're going through. You know our several needs. You know our uprisings and our downfalls. You know everything about us. So God, we place it at your altar right now. Somebody's dealing with sadness, Lord. Let them know, oh God, that the sun will shine again. Yes. Bless our finances, oh God. Bless our health, oh God. Lord, we're praying for all those that we're duty-bound to pray for. Those that are in hospitals, hospices, those that are in jail, those that are homeless, oh God. We pray right now that you will be a shelter. Lord, we thank you for this season. And before we close this prayer, oh God, anything we didn't have a mind to pray for. We pray that thy will be done in our lives. For God, we know if we are in your will, all will be well. We understand that all things work together for good. For them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Bless now, God, only now can. God, we say thank you and we honor you. And as we come to the close of this watch, 
We thank you, Lord, for what our eyes have seen, our ears have heard, and our hearts have conceived. We thank you, Lord, most of all for these, your people. We pray your blessings and your benediction upon each of them. Go before them to guide, behind to protect, and on either side to prop them up. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, spotless before your throne. May the grace of God and the sweet holy communion rest, rule, and abide with us henceforth now and forevermore. And the people of God say amen. Amen.